Hi there and welcome to my video. In this video we're going to take first a little spring cleaning of your Mac and then we're going to take some steps that will prepare it for the new Mountain Lion release. And let's just get straight to it. Um, if you take a look in the description uh, pane on my uh, uh, on YouTube you'll find that I have this uh, checklist for you um, so you can print it out or just have it on your screen and just check through what you have done. It is everything that we're going to go through today. I'm not going to use any third-party applications to do this. It's going to be down and dirty with your hands in everything. So let's just get started. And the first problem we see is my desktop. It's completely littered with all kinds of things. It might be convenient for me, but it's not very convenient for my computer. Because every single time you have an icon on the desktop, the computer has to calculate the quick look preview and this can actually slow down the computer significantly. So of course your first task will be to arrange this. And if you like some of it on your desktop then just create a few folder folders for it. So let's just say that I have some images here and I have quite a lot of those. And just throw them in a folder. Once you have thrown all your images into one folder then why not uh, highlight it a bit. If you select the folder and then go to the file menu you can actually label it with any color you like more or less. So if you want this to be blue then it has a blue little uh, label on it. And of course let's just get the rest of the desktop arranged now that we're at it. There we go. Now my images and videos are in two simple folders and all my documents have been thrown into the document stack or basically into the document folder and the rest uh, into my downloads folder. So that cleans up our desktop and this will make your Mac a lot faster on the everyday use. Now the next thing is to just start cleaning out every place on your Mac. There probably is a lot of things that you have on the system that you won't even need anymore. And let's start with the most obvious places. Your downloads folder. There is all these files that came with my computer, the about downloads, then I have an old manual laying around, some installation files. And I don't really need any of this. So just get it out, delete it, throw it to the trash. And here's another thing that's actually overlooked if you use it. If you open up your home folder and go to your public folder, there usually is a lot of files here too if you're the kind of person who shares files. And if you do, remember to delete it. There we go. And of course, while you're at it, you probably have a lot of documents on your computer that you don't even need. And we have this about stacks, and then I have uh, some other files around here that I don't really need anymore. This presentation was delivered on a specific different date, and I have a spreadsheet line here. I'm not really using that anymore, so let's just throw that out and get this cleaned up so you have a lot less in your folders. And while we're at it, let's clean up some of our other places on the computer. We have iTunes. You probably have a lot of music that you don't want to listen to anymore. Uh, like I have, uh, this is not my entire music collection, just a bit of it. I have some Bass Hunter here that's not cool to listen to anymore. So let's get rid of that. And then I have some of all this Eurovision Song Contest that we have here in Europe. And let me get rid of some of the older years because I don't really listen to them anymore. And here you can just drag them right to the trash and it will delete the songs. When you delete them, make sure that you choose Move to Trash or else the files will stay on your computer. This is of course to regain space on your computer and get rid of all the stuff that you don't even want to listen to anyway. And then of course iPhoto. You may have a lot of photos that you don't want to watch anymore any anyway. I have here a series of images of some children who had destroyed the the place where I work, they basically trashed all the windows. Now this time it'll be a little bit different. You'll have to drag it to the trash in iPhoto and delete the photos. Once you've done that you have to right click the trash and empty it. And then you will have deleted all of the photos from iPhoto. And the next of course is GarageBand. Now GarageBand doesn't really have its own library file anywhere so you'll have to go into the finder open up your music folder and I have created the folder here for my GarageBand projects and here they are. And of course if you've saved them with a little preview on them you can just hit them with the spacebar and they'll play back. 
And I have a few files that I don't really need. I don't really need this file anymore. The rest is for a review that I'm doing on my computer. I'll just need to get my video camera working and I can use that. And of course, when you have cleaned up your home folder and pretty much uh, got rid of all your files that you don't really need anymore, let's start with some of the more interesting places now. Of course, your applications folder, you will likely have a ton of applications on your computer that you don't even use anymore. And as you can see, I have a pretty large amount on my system. I have a MacBook Air, so this burning application, I don't really need that one. And I'm going over to Google Chrome instead of Firefox, I'm going to be removing that. And Handbrake, it's again ripping DVDs into video files, I don't really do that. And of course, just carry on, there's probably a lot of files that you actually can remove. And it is easy, just drag them to the trash, then it'll ask you for your password, and there you go. Now the files are deleted. And you can go through your entire applications folder. Now, the next thing that I have listed here is widgets. Because of course, if you're like me, you have a ton of widgets. Now this is just a few widgets that I just quickly threw up on the screen. But of course, this takes a lot of power from my computer, and it removes kind of a lot of space. So let's start cleaning up. Um, I just click this little plus down here and uh, then I get these uh, close buttons. I don't really track any uh, planes right now. It's not really the season for snow so I'm gonna clean that out too. And I don't really follow this ESPN hockey thing. And movies, well it's kinda nice to be upgraded on that one and this lava lamp here it's just basically dragging away, dragging away my attention. So let's get rid of that. So clearly gives me a lot more space for the things that I want. And if we click here on manage widgets, we get this little manager up here and we can remove the widgets completely from the system that we don't need anymore. And this lava lamp here, let's just remove that. And it'll be moved to the trash. Good. Now the next thing is that you might have some preference panes that you don't really need anymore. Now I have this one called Mac Fuse that I don't need anymore. I was experimenting with some alternative file formats and I don't really need this program anymore now. Now this is going to be a little bit more tricky to remove. Uh, you'll have to open up your finder and then go to your Macintosh hard drive. There we go. And then you'll have to open up your library folder. Now pay Pay a little attention here because if you remove the wrong files here, you can pretty much trash your system. We are looking for the folder with the preference panes, and it is here. And here I can see all the preference panes installed on my system. And I'll just take the Mac fuse and just drag it to the trash. Good. If the preference pane you're not looking for isn't here, we'll take that immediately now. Because there is two library folders on your computer. The system-wide, which we just entered right now, and while you're here, you might want to just uh, take a look through this, and maybe you'll find some folders that you can live without. You will usually find them here in application support. This is all the folders for the saved stuff from your various applications on your Mac. So there might be something in here that you want to remove. There is a Mozilla folder here. I'll just get rid of that. Good. In order, if you, if you just check on your home folder, please note that you don't have a library folder here. You will have if you run Snow Leopard, however, but you won't if you have Lion. Now, don't worry, it's not removed. It's still there. We'll just have to access it a bit differently. We'll open up the Go menu and select Go to Folder. Now, here you'll have to make this uh, little uh, funny symbol here. Um, and then you'll have to type the short name of your uh, user on the computer, mine is just uh, L-U-N-D-E-R, and then you'll have to uh, write library. Now, whether you're running on a Danish, English, or German system, you have to write uh, the English name here, library, or else the folder won't open. Then you hit the go button, and then the folder will open for you. Now you have a library folder that's specific to only your user. Now I'm just on a test user here, so I can basically go crazy and delete everything if I want to. Now this Octoscape is for some streaming, I don't need that anymore, and that's basically the only thing I really found here, but you may find more. Then we have the application support folder. 
Now I have a ton of applications that I have previously removed from my system. So I have a lot of folders here that I can delete. Now I've just marked them with red before I started the video. And I can just quickly drag them to the trash and get rid of it. And all of this will of course recover some disk space and there will be less information for the Mac to actually uh, check through when you launch your various things. So when you've been through all these folders and cleaned up basically everything that you have around your computer, it's time to empty the trash, of course. There we go. And now we have, uh, oh, I have a DMG file in use here. I'll just quickly eject that one. Uh, now we have cleaned up our system, and now it's time to do sort of a preparation for a brand new operating system. And of course, Every good user will start checking for some updates, so hit the Apple logo and check for the software update. Now, I'm fairly good at keeping my Mac up to date, so it won't find anything here. And of course, if you have App Store on your computer, and you will if you're planning to upgrade to Mountain Lion, you will have to check through updates here as well. And if you have a lot of third-party apps, which you might, uh, of course, remember to go through those applications and check do they have any upgrades. Now the next thing is also a bit of a spring cleaning tip actually, because if you go into system preferences and choose users and groups, and then you hit the button login items, you'll see all the items that actually opens up along with your computer. Now this is a test user that I, that I set up, so there isn't really any items here. But uh, this items helper, if I don't really want that to start along with my computer, I just hit this minus button and then it disappears. All the items on this list will start up when you log into the user on your Mac. And of course, having a lot of items here can really slow your Mac down. Remove those you don't need. Now, the next tip is something, it's also a bit of a spring cleaning tip, but it's something that the computer pretty much does on its own. We're going to clear out some of all the um, temporary files that the computer keep around along with some of the logs we're going to run something called a periodic script. It's something that the computer does automatically, daily, weekly, and monthly. But we're going to ask it to do all of those now. So I'm going to type the command sudo. This is to tell it that I'm running it um, as an administrator. And uh, for, though, for you who don't really know the terminal of the computer, you can find it in the utilities folder on your Mac. If you go to the go menu and select uh, utilities, it is right in here is this black symbol here. This is basically a command line tool where you can type commands to the computer. And the sudo command means that you're going to run this as an admin, so you're going to run uh, this command with full write on your system. And then we're going to type that we're going to run this uh, periodic, and we would like it to run the daily, the weekly, and the monthly script. And then I just hit enter, and it'll then tell me uh, that the sudo command can be dangerous because of course I'm going in as the admin at my computer. I'll just type my password. And as I type it, it won't set any stars or anything on the computer, but it will register. I hit the enter button and, uh, oh, I mistyped that one. There we go. And now it is running. It'll take a few minutes. And uh, if your computer hasn't really been doing this lately, it can take a little bit long. Uh, now I have a MacBook Air here with a solid state drive, so this took no time at all. Good. Now the next thing we want to clean a little bit up in is Safari. Over time, Safari, and this is not, this is basically to regain a little performance on your computer. Over the time, Safari can be a pretty heavy memory user because all the stuff that it loads into its buffer, it can really be thirsty. So we want to reset Safari. So we check, uh, we open up the Safari menu and click Reset Safari. Here you'll get a list of everything that, the, uh, that it can uh, reset for you. There's a few things that you want to keep. All the saved names and passwords on the computer you want to keep. The autofill information, you want to keep that as well. That's so it can autofill from your address book and stuff like that. Uh, and it remember what it autofilled where. And of course, uh, this uh, remove all website data will also... Um, Uncheck that one because, of course, if you stored some information from a website on your computer, you want to keep that so you don't root, so you don't have to run around, type all your passwords and everything everywhere, and type all your data in uh, whatever uh, you are using. And then we'll just hit the reset button, 
and everything from the cache and everything in Safari will be removed and I have experience to regain over a hundred megabytes of memory in my computer by doing this. Not hard drive space, but memory that's available for other applications on my Mac. We're going to perform something called a check of our disk. So you need the program called Disk Utility. And if you remember a few minutes ago, we uh, were opening the Utilities folder. Now we need to go there again, because here we have the uh, Disk Utility folder, uh, sorry, uh, application. And that's what you'll need for this. Good. Now we need to select our Macintosh hard drive. And the first thing we'll do is to verify the disk permissions. So I'll just click that one. And what it'll do now is to check is every permission on my computer as it should be. Now, depending on how many files you have and how fast your computer is, this can take everything from a few minutes to about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on how much stuff you have on your computer. So when I have a MacBook Air here uh, with not too many files on it, so it should be rather speedy. There we go. Now the, verif uh, the verification is complete and it didn't throw up a long list of permissions that's broken on the system. That's because usually I keep my Mac up to date with these things so it always runs smooth. But should you encounter any uh, uh, file permissions that's wrong, uh, repair disk permissions. If you have a Mac that's two years old and you have never done this, you are likely to find a lot. Now the next thing we're going to do is to verify the disk. Now, this will not only just check if your file permissions are correct, this will verify the entire disk. Now, I'm not going to run this because it's, it might screw up my video demonstration here. Um, but this will verify that everything on your hard drive is as it's supposed to be. And if there is any faults, you can actually repair them by restarting the computer and opening up in recovery mode. But they keep alternative down on your computer when you start it up and you can act, get access to the recovery mode and from there you can repair the drive. That's pretty quick information to give you. And this is very important to do before you start upgrading an operating system because if there's something wrong with your file system uh, on your computer, it can really screw up the upgrade. Um, and that basically concludes our um, spring cleaning of our Mac. Now we have a clean desktop, we have a clean documents folder, and we have a lot of things that's just been thrown out. Now, if you plan to run an upgrade to OS X Mountain Lion, there is one thing that I would recommend you to do. Because, of course, if you're like me, you have your Mac running for like 30 days before you restart it. And having a computer that's been running for 20 days without a restart and then upgrading another operating system, that's basically begging for problems. So hit the Apple menu and select Restart. And if you have uh, Lion, now I have uh, multiple users locked in here, so it won't show the correct um, correct window. I'll just show the lockout window. You'll have a window mostly like this. And um, if you have this box checked, it'll reopen everything you had open when you lock back in again. You'll need to uncheck that so you get a clean start from your Mac. So there is as little running on your Mac as possible when you perform this upgrade. So I uh, hope you can use my tips and uh, thank you for watching.